So the way we've been approaching DDC in the study that we've provided is through the aid that is actually extended by local and regional governments. So we've been tracking the share of ODA flows that was uh, transiting through local and regional governments, but we're aware, of course, that this is one of the proxies to approach uh, decentralized development cooperation and that there is a a diversity of situations across and, and within countries. So in the absence of that common definition, uh, the way the credit reporting system works is that countries self-report what they consider to be uh, decentralized developed cooperation through ODA flows in particular. The report itself, which is very much work in progress, shows a number of things. The first one is that the total volume of what we've been looking at uh, in terms of decentralized development cooperation through ODA flows has increased between 2005, which is when we did the last uh, study, and 2017. And it has increased from 1.7 to 1.8 billion dollars. And it's quite a surprise because this has happened despite the financial crisis. And that shows basically this increasing advocacy and intervention of local and regional governments in the field of development cooperation. When we look at some of the more uh, specifics, uh, we see, for example, that the uh, top country, uh, if you take into account imputed student costs that some may consider are not decentralized uh, development cooperation, the top country is China over the past 12 years. And uh, uh, another three countries in the top ranking are India, Cameroon, and Morocco. If you get read of the imputed student costs, then you have other countries on top of the ranking. You see Haiti back in 2010, and that's linked to the earthquake. And you see more recently some Latin American countries. This is very much linked to Spanish uh, DDC activities, uh, Peru, Salvador, amongst others. But you also see Gaza Trip, uh, Senegal. So you, you have a shift in the, in the recipient slash uh, partner countries. When you look at the criteria for defining these geographical uh, priorities, you see an increasing attention paid to the localization of global agendas, in addition to the traditional criteria looking at poverty and extreme poverty. And that's very important because it shows this importance of uh, territorial approach to uh, global commitments, in addition to the traditional historical and political criteria and to what central aid authorities define as, as priority countries. If you look at the sectors, um, you see basically increasing attention to uh, local democracy, governance, you also see attention to education and other social sectors, health, water, uh, amongst others, and that depends very much on what countries define as their uh, priorities. So the takeaway messages are basically this diversity of situations across and within countries, an increasing uh, volume, uh, about 6% uh, related to DDC, that confirms that this is there, it exists and uh, is done well. The existence also of some evaluation mechanisms and a lot of stock taking being done in uh, in the different countries and basically that acknowledgement that this is a shared responsibility across levels of government. Two uh, messages that came out quite strong related to um, two big priorities on gender and climate change um, and what we could see is uh, starting with gender first that the decentralized cooperation had a very strong gender focus uh, compared to non-decentralized cooperation the focus was much stronger uh, especially uh, I think we saw that in the case of Spain as, as one country which is really very strong and again I think that speaks to the uh, you know very people driven personal focus of this kind of cooperation and it was really one of the key messages that struck us. Another uh, observation that we had related to uh, climate related development cooperation and there we noted while in fact the overall amount or the overall share in decentralized cooperation uh, that related to climate was lower than in non-decentralized cooperation, there was a very high focus on adaptation. And uh, that speaks again to the fact that it's, it's, you know, communities sharing knowledge how to actually adapt to the, the climate change that is already happening. Um, and that's actually been a big uh, what, challenge or priority internationally today. We see lots of uh, uh, development related, uh, climate related development cooperation going to mitigation issues but not enough to, to, to adaptation and that's really, uh, it seems, the strength of the decentralized cooperation to focus on that uh, dimension of the, of the climate agenda.